All right. Hi, everyone. As you know, my name is Jason Fisk. I'm the Assistant Dean here at Albany Law School. Uh, welcome to the graduate programs here. This incoming class for January has students from, on my last count, about uh, six or seven different states, and uh, four different programs are represented from you all in this January incoming class. So we have students who are in our online master's or LLM program in cybersecurity and data privacy. We have students who are in our online financial appliance and risk management program. We have students who are in our online and slash residential healthcare uh, health law and compliance program. And we also have a student in our uh, advanced legal studies master's program as well. So that's, that's a very good sampling and welcome all to the program. So the, the first thing that we're going to do now is, uh, is you're going to uh, just introduce yourself. And so I'll, what we'll do is I'll just work through the list one at a time. And so when I, when I call your name, if you wouldn't mind turning on your microphone and speaking, if you don't have access to a microphone or a phone, uh, just go ahead and start typing, chatting and typing your bio in the box now in the chat box. And then when I call your name, just go ahead and click enter and it'll come up and then I'll read it for you. Uh, so I'll, I'll go ahead and go around. If you, a couple hints for you what to share, say uh, where you located, uh, what program you're in, uh, what, uh, what, uh, what makes you interested in taking this program, why are you taking the program, uh, any sort of background you want to share about yourself, and try to throw in a, maybe a fun fact about, about yourself. So I'll go ahead and start at the top of the list as I see it. Uh, Asha, if you wouldn't mind uh, getting started. Um, hi, everyone. I am currently calling from Kenya, uh, Nairobi, Kenya. That's where I live. Um, I'm originally from the area. I guess that's my interesting uh, fact. I am from East Africa originally, but I grew up in the U.S. Uh, I'm in the cybersecurity and privacy law program, LLM program. And I'm interested in the area because I'm already working in IT and I kind of want to advance my knowledge and um, hopefully go back to practicing. I'm currently not practicing. I've taken a, about a seven year break. So hoping to get back to practicing law in the next couple of years. Very nice. Thanks for, thanks for sharing. And that's uh, definitely a fun fact that you're located, you'll be located in Kenya for, for the program. So that's, that's definitely a fun fact right there. All right. Uh, thanks for sharing. Uh, Valinda, you're, you're up next. Thanks, Jason. My name is Valinda Santero. I live in Boise, Idaho. Uh, Kenyan sounds uh, a little more exciting than Boise, Idaho, though. Um, I am taking the Cybersecurity Data Privacy Master's program. I have been employed with the same company chip manufacturer in little Boise, Idaho is where our corporate headquarters are. Um, I've been with the company for 24 years. Uh, my background is was physical security to start with with the first 11, and then I've been in information security for the last um, 12, 12 years, almost 13 years. And um, I have just recently uh, was in uh, IT compliance, so um, information technology compliance. And I just recently moved over to the cyber defense team. Um, so it kind of aligned with what I do. I've dealt a lot with privacy, um, brought up GDPR. Right now we're handling the California Consumer Protection Act. So we're dealing with some of the access requests that are coming out of that. Um, fun fact about me, I love muscle cars. <laughs> Being a girl, it's kind of uh, kind of odd. I try not to um, buy too many of them. Um, my, my favorite one is my um, 1990 anniversary model uh it's a mustang 5.0 that i usually just uh bring out of the storage in the uh summertime looking forward to working with everybody so what do you just put it away in, in a storage facility during the winter or something so where where do, where do those go during all the snow yeah yeah it doesn't it doesn't come out even in the water even in the wet time um we're in the valley we don't tend to get a lot of snow but I do have a truck that I drive in the winter time, um, and uh, my uh, convertible just gets stored away. It go, usually goes away about the end of October and doesn't come out again and see the sunshine until around March. 
Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Th- well, well, thanks. Thanks for sharing. That's, that's very interesting yeah. and definitely also a fun fact. So I hope, I hope when in the classes at the beginning, we always have like social bios and everyone, I hope you can share some pictures of those cars uh, in, in, in those uh, discussion forums. That'd be kind of fun to see. Oh, you bet. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. Uh, next up is a uh, Deborah. Go ahead. The floor, the floor is yours. So um, I live right here in the Capital District. Um, I am an accountant and I work for the federal government. Um, I've been with them for about 18 years and before that I was in public accounting. Um, Fun fact, accountants aren't very fun. So um, let's see, Um, I'm a marathon runner and um, I guess that's about it. I love it. marathon runners is very fun. I'm actually uh, my specialty is, is tax, and so I've definitely had a lot of accountants and things in my accounts. And so I, I like to think that we tax people are fun, just maybe in some different ways of of other people. That's at least how I view it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So thanks, thanks for sharing. Uh, next up is uh, Deanna. De- uh, go ahead. And I think you'll have to unmute your mic if you're going to be able to say anything. All right, we'll go. Oh, oh, there, okay. Oh, there we go. Can you hear me now? Yes, can hear you loud and clear. Sorry, I was muted on the, I didn't realize it was muted in both places. Okay, anyway, sorry. So uh, I'm from South Dakota. Um, I am a compliance director, um, and I think that. I, um, my experience really closely mimics Deborah with the muscle cars, right? Is that right? Who had the muscle car, Deborah? No? Nope. Nope. Oh, that okay, was Belinda. <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah, 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 that was Belinda. That was Belinda. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, uh, yeah. So that is the person. Yeah. So my uh, experience really is close to that. Um, compliance. Um, IT, cybersecurity kind of stuff. So I'm in the um, cybersecurity and data privacy program. So I'm excited to uh, get started. Fun fact, um, oh my gosh, I don't know. I've rearranged my office now for the sixth time in as many months. So I can't, uh, I don't know if that's a fun fact, but I just can't make up my mind on how I want it to look. So well, you're good. there you go. That's, I think that's fun slash unique. So I'll, that, that, def- <laughs> yeah. that definitely counts. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Thank, thanks for sharing. Uh, so, so far, this, this is interesting because you never know the order of people because usually like uh, a, a good chunk of people are always from New York. But so far, we have someone from New York and then we have some from Kenya, South Dakota and Idaho as the first four up. Let's see how, how we end the day here with the last few people. Uh, uh, Jason, go ahead. Uh, the floor is yours. Jason, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm Jason. Uh, I'm actually I I live in the uh, capital district right now. Uh, originally from Queens. Uh, I've been living here for I guess like past five years now. Um, and I work. I currently work as a BSA three for a health company out in Latham. And uh, I guess a fun fact about me would be. Uh, I'm an avid dancer. Uh, I love to dance, uh, whether it's hip hop or just with my friends and things like that. Um, I forgot there was one more part to this. I can't remember which part that was that you said. Did you mention which uh, which program you're in? Oh, um, the cybersecurity and data privacy program. Um, and uh, I've always had a big uh, passion for law and uh, governance. So just kind of tying things with my IT side with uh, law aspect of it is very intriguing for me. Absolutely. So thanks. Thanks so much for sharing, Patty. Uh, so the next one, let's see it up is uh, Tom. Tom, go ahead. The floor is yours. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Tom McCarroll. I'm uh, also a resident of the Capital District, and I'm doing the program in healthcare law and compliance. And I currently work as a compliance and privacy officer and a VP for regulatory and in the healthcare field. I've got a a long history in 
regulatory and government affairs uh, in telecom. I've been in healthcare for probably the last uh, five years and uh, increasingly uh, into the compliance and privacy area. So I thought it would make sense to get a little bit of a ex uh, expertise, uh, additional expertise in that area. Uh, my, I guess my fun fact would be I'm a, a yoga instructor, uh, and uh, though I don't, I don't really have an opportunity to teach much these days because uh, work has gotten uh, increasingly intense. So uh, I'm still an avid practitioner, uh, but uh, not really teaching at this point in time. Uh, although in my past, I've uh, at one point I was actually teaching full time, which was a nice little vacation from the corporate world. So. But I'm looking forward to the program and uh, glad to be here. Absolutely. Thanks so much for sharing, Tom. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, and then last but not least is, uh, it just said I just see PML05. So I don't know who that is, but if you wouldn't mind uh, unmuting and, uh, and sharing about yourself. All right, it looks like the sound isn't on and on for them. So if, if you ever get it on, just uh, feel free to, to pipe in and you can you can share about yourself. So all right, so thanks everyone for sharing. Looks like we have quite a variety of interesting uh, people from interesting locations and also with hobbies range, it sounded from ranging from dance to yoga to muscle cars to uh, rearranging your office to <laughs> all sorts of different fun things. So I really look forward to getting to know you all more uh, in the classes to come in, in, inside the program. So as we mentioned, this is the orientation uh, session here. Uh, I, don't, I don't anticipate it going much more than 45 minutes likely. Uh, it, 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 most all, everything, hopefully you, you already know, this is to fill in some gaps and to highlight a few items of importance uh, to really get you kick started and off successfully here uh, starting this, this term coming up here on Monday. So the first thing I want to reiterate, hope, hopefully I remember to tell you on the phone, is that every session you will always gain access to the online classes Friday before the term starts. And so that's when we activate all the classes. And so it's, you know, it's Wednesday right now before the term starts, so you wouldn't be able to see any of them, but Friday you'll be able to see all of them. Uh, we will always make great attempts to email you out in the book lists and things to purchase in, in advance. Not all classes have, have books. Uh, you should have received e an email regarding any classes that you take that in session one that do have books for purchase. Uh, so that's that. And, and sometimes the professors will email with accompanying maybe like first week's readings or, or something like that as well. Uh, every, every, sometimes, not every professor does that. But anyway, that's what, that's what you can kind of expect over the next few days. Hopefully you already have gained, or you have already accessed all of your credentials and that those have come to you. If not, uh, wait till the end of the day today. And if you haven't received your credentials to log into the portal and, and to get access to your Albany Law email, uh, send me an email grad, at graduate programs at Albany Law EDU, and we'll get that sorted as soon as possible uh, for you. Uh, so that's that. You'll have a chance to answer, ask any questions you want at the end of the session. I just have a few things to go through. Some of it, as I say, will be reiteration. Others, other things will be new. And so that's that. Uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. So first off, as a reminder, there's um, all of you kind of come in, into it in different programs. Uh, some of you are in cyber, some are in financial compliance, some are in health, uh, advanced legal studies. And so each of the programs has uh, different curriculum and different offerings as far as classes are concerned. Here's a sampling of courses if you're in the cybersecurity program, as an example. Um, you are uh, to graduate with uh, with the concentration with the degree, let's say in cybersecurity data privacy, you'll need to take at least 18 of the credits of your degree in that particular concentration. So if you're LLM, that means 18 of the 24 will be directly in cyber. If you're master's, 18 of the 30 will be cybersecurity or whichever concentration. And that means the rest of the credits will be three, if you're in the master's program, Three of the credits will be introduction to law and legal methods class here in this first session starting on Monday. Then all of you, LLM and masters, not certificate, but LLM and masters will end the program with a thesis class, which is three credits as well. If you followed along with the math there, that means that if you're in, uh, if you're in the LLM program, that you'll have essentially 18 credits in your concentration, 
you'll have three credits in thesis, and then you'll have three credits of electives in which you can take class, either one three credit class or a few one credit classes, if you so choose, in a different concentration. Or you can just stay in your own, your own concentration, totally your choice. If you're in the master's program, you'll take 18 credits specifically in your concentration. You'll take the three credit introduction to law and legal methods class, and you'll take the three credit thesis class. That leaves six credits of electives from a different concentration if you so choose. Now, it, again, if you want to keep it all in your concentration, totally fine as well. That's part of the flexibility of our program. Uh, so that's a little just as far as what you can expect with the curriculum and the, um, the kind of the basics on the graduation requirements. The, the certificate program, you'll take nine credits inside the concentration, and, and that's that. So that, that's, a, that's the, the simple breakdown of the certificate program. And so that, that one's easy enough. If you're in the cybersecurity and data privacy certificate, the 501 course is a required one. The other six elect are elective credits. So that's the, the, the quick and dirty requirements for the various uh, programs in, in our graduate programs. Now, uh, a few notes on uh, how to be a successful online student. So most of you have never taken an online class before. And that is totally fine. And you, uh, we have built the program with that in mind. Uh, we, we have expectations that the students coming in have not taken an online class before. And so we've built the program to hopefully be as intuitive as possible. And also, we've built the program with connection in mind. And so we always want our students to be able to connect on a regular basis with each other and to be able to connect with the professors of the classes um, on an ongoing basis. On that note, each class in the, in the online program uh, has essentially two professors assigned to it. And so uh, Introductions on Legal Methods, if you're a master's student, is the one exception where, where I'm the one professor. But in all your other classes, we have what we call a professor and we have an instructor. The professor is the, per, is the uh, professor who essentially builds out the course, creates the assignments, and uh, uh, records the lectures and, and builds out the discussion forums and all that. The instructor is the person that carries out the actual course itself. So the instructor will be your day-to-day -day contact person regarding the class. They will send weekly announcements to everyone regarding what's expected that week and, and a recap on what was completed before. Uh, they'll do a lot of the grading for the assignments, and so that, that's how we've broken it up. We have a team approach to each of our classes, so that just gives you more resources um, to take advantage of for, for each of the classes as far as uh, professors are concerned. In most of your classes, you'll have what we call live check-ins, and so each week you'll have the opportunity to talk with either the professor or the instructor and uh, ask any questions that you might have or just chat with them about, you know, career options or the field just in general of general interest i'm sure that and they would love to talk with you they'd love it when students uh, come to those those are not required sessions they are optional but naturally they're recommended because it's a great resource to be able to talk with with our professors and our instructors uh, so information on those the, t the days and times and such will be available inside each one of your courses for that uh, so that those are a couple things about the classes themselves if at any point uh, you can ask any questions you want at the end, you can also chat in any questions in the chat box if you ever want to chime in at uh, any point during this presentation also. So a couple minutes on tips for being a successful online student, because as I mentioned, most of you have never taken an online class before. Some of you have taken a couple, and I think one of you has taken numerous online classes. Uh, so there's, there's a bit of a range, but the majority have taken zero. So it, I think it's important for us to take a few minutes on how to be a successful online student. So we will email you these slides. There's, there's several different um, tips and tricks of the trade of, of being a successful online student. We, um, on the administrative staff here, have, uh, have brought through the process of online programs um, over a, a thousand students over our personal careers. The Al Albany Law School programs have been in existence online since about 2016, but I've been working online programs since 2008, and 
our instructional design team has, has had many years of experience as well and, and fostered through many students. Because. So we've seen what works for online students and we see what doesn't work as well. And so, so these I think you'll find very helpful. To me, if I have to sum it up, uh, I would sum it up in engagement. The students who engage with each other and with the professors and with the material on a regular, continuous and systematic basis are those who will be much more likely to succeed in the program uh, as a whole. It's a very important part of that is to set aside specific time devoted to these courses on a regular continuous basis each week. Schedule it in, calendar in, make it consistent. And so if you do this, then that that will make it so systematic that you'll never forget to do it. If instead you let your calendar fill up and you just kind of ad hoc it when you can do work, then your calendar will be full, you'll fall behind, and it won't work. So I've seen it time and again. So uh, carve out that 6 a.m. to 8 a.m., the 9 p.m. to 11 p.m., whatever it is for you as part of the flexibility, uh, make it happen, make it work, make it consistent across the board. Also, I really suggest you all, you all get your family on board with this process as well. So whatever that looks like with you. So if that's, uh, if that's a spouse, if that's um, older children or whatever the case may be, it's important for them to feel part of your team and to be supporters during the process because there's, there's gonna be plenty of times where you have your time set aside and other demands come up, whatever it might be. Uh, and so if they're on your team with you, through the process that that'll be that much more support for you to be able to put that the time that's needed to advance your career through this process as is necessary. So those are a couple uh, points that students have told us over the years that were the best tips for them to make them successful in, in online programs. You, you can also uh, check in all this. As far as logging into the class, it's definitely recommended to log in at least three times a week for each online for each online class you're in. So some students like to do it every day, some do it you know every other day. Any of that's fine. Also, take note immediately at the beginning of the course and calendar uh, any due dates and expectations for the course. And so if you usually assignments in across the board in this class will be due on Sundays and so that makes it easier for you it's consistent it's known you'll have the weekend and so on so just be able to plan and prepare and chart out for you okay I'll be able to do the readings on these days the watch the videos these days discussion forums those days and I'll carve out this time for the assignment that's due this Sunday so like that that's usually a great way the students tell us that is successful for them to, to make it through um, the program successfully uh, yeah, so those, that's kind of the gist. Again, I'll uh, send out these slides uh, later today so you can look through each of these tips if you're interested in seeing some more. There's some really good tips here that our instructional design team put together for you. Uh, secondly, so another thing we want to talk about today is if you haven't had a chance already, get in there and check out the portal and Canvas. So the portal is our access point to the school through uh, online. So you'll uh, when you log in, it'll look part of it will look something like this on the screen right now. And so you'll see that there's essentially all these different uh, sections that have different links that go to uh, various places. I want to highlight a couple of them for you. One is under academics. Here, you'll notice down here is grades. So the grade portion uh, is at the end of the term when your grades are submitted by the professors. This is where you're going to be able to go in and view your final grades for each class. You'll, all, you'll be able to look at your scores and things throughout the whole term regularly inside the Canvas course itself, but this is kind of where the official system is as far as looking at uh, where your actual grades will be posted. Uh, transcripts, you can, you can view your transcripts here. If you ever need to uh, request transcripts for whatever reason, uh, this, is the, this is the spot to do it as well. You can, you can uh, put in your transcript request forms here. Uh, those are uh, the main ones. Some of this other stuff is more designed for residential students, so those are the couple ones I want to highlight for you that are the most relevant for our online students. When you click on, uh, to, to get into the, the actual course through Canvas, uh, this is a screenshot of some of the portal, but over here to the right, so kind of off the screen of, of this particular viewing point, is 
the link to Canvas. And so when you click on Canvas, it'll take you to a screen that looks something like this. And this is essentially what you'll likely see when you log in. So here in this box is uh, the Canvas orientations. This is essentially a course uh, in Canvas for you. This, this one orients you to Canvas. And so it shows you how to use it, how to be a good student when using it. Uh, if, if you've taken an online class before or multiple and use a different learning management system, Canvas is called a learning management system. If you've used a different one before, check this orientation out, familiarize yourself, but it'll, you know, you've done one, you've done them all. They're all, they're all from a student perspective, they're all similar, just kind of laid out a little differently. If this is your first online class, spend a little bit more time in here because it, it'll train you on how to view things, how to, um, how, how to create, how, how to submit assignments, that kind of thing. So I think that'll be helpful for you. Uh, you can, this link up here on the top, uh, will allow you to get directly to there if you don't want to have to log in through the portal every time. So that's that's up to you. On the left here, uh, vertically, you'll see different options. So the dashboard will show you in this in this format. Uh, on Friday, you'll see the other classes listed, the other ones you're registered for. That'll pop up here, 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 across here. Uh, underneath that is courses. That'll allow you to see all the courses you have access to, uh, maybe from a previous term as well as the current ones and you'll see some of the different ones below. Here's the uh, inbox here, which is some messaging you could do through the system itself. Um, and those are some of the main ones. When you have more courses available to you, this is what, this is what it's gonna look like. So you're gonna be able to see uh, multiple courses ar around uh, in, in these kind of row fashion. Uh, when uh, after you take a term or whatnot, if you click on this button right here, it'll allow you to, some options will pop up, and it'll allow you to do things, uh, kind of change the, the view of them, you can change the colors, that kind of thing, but you can also drag and drop these, and so if, if you prefer like your current courses to come up first or any order you want, you can drag and drop them right to the front uh, for just depending on what your preference is. When you log into a class, so the Canvas orientation immediately, and then the other classes started on Friday, this is what you'll see. And so each of Canvas is organized like so, that there's this left, left vertical that has various, various items on it, including the syllabus and the modules, which has all the learning activities and materials here. And so if, whenever you click one of these, so if I clicked here M1 overview, it would expand. And the expand, and when it expands, it would, uh, it'll show you things like this. And so each, you can click on each one of these, and these, these items here, after you click on it, will show you, maybe it's a Word document, maybe it's a video, maybe it's, it's something else that the professor's provided. And so this will kind of show you and guide you through each one. So in this particular one, M1, meaning module one, and then M2, meaning module two, uh, with the labeling of each module. So that's that, that's what you can expect Canvas to look like when, when you get into it. And, and the gist on how to uh, work around it. Do we have uh, any questions at this point? Jason, the, yeah. uh, in terms of accessing the Albany Law email, can we do that from the screen that we were just looking at? Is that the, is that the inbox? Is that a... No, this, this inbox is for messages through, um, through Canvas specifically. The, uh, to access through, um, normally, you'll come to the portal here, and you'll be able to access the, uh, the email on the top left of the portal, which is where the, the inbox would be for your, uh, for, your, for your email. Thank you. Yep. All right, good question. So uh, now, you all have joined Albany Law School, and just a couple moments about uh, highlighting Albany Law School itself. So, the law school was founded in 1851, so it makes it it makes it the law the law um, the longest standing uh, independent law school in the country. And we were rec recently ranked in the uh, top 20 of most innovative law schools. We have over 10,000 alumni network across across the world. We were recently ranked uh, number one for most uh, flexible. We were also ranked a number, we've actually had more recently, we've had a number 11 national ranking. We recently had a number nine national ranking. Additionally, we were recently ranked as the number one master's program in the Northeast, which of course we were most proud of considering we're in the Northeast. And so that uh, was a, one we really liked. We also have, gov we also have 
uh, alums of all sorts. We have alums uh, who are lawyers, of course, but we also have politicians. We have a former president. We have Supreme Court justices. We have uh, reputable uh, business pe people, CEOs and such, who uh, are alums of our school. So we have quite a variety, and we look forward to you all uh, becoming alums here in the coming year or two uh, as well of our school. Once you graduate from the programs, you'll be able to attend uh, all the alumni exception, uh, all, all the alumni events. They go nationwide on these things, and so they're they're popping up all over the country all the time, all up and down the East Coast. They head over to California and West Coast items. I don't know if they have any stops in South Dakota or Idaho yet, but ho hopefully they'll get a few more so we can uh, go there as well. But uh, the program, essentially, after you graduate, will keep you informed of these types of events, and the alumni department will get you connected so that you can still connect with, with the school um, for as long as you will, as, lo as long as you'd like, which a lot of our alums tell us uh, is one of the most valuable things that they, that they even get from the program is those connections that they can stick around with uh, for their whole career. A, a lot of times, students who... Uh, our starting offer is kind of curious, you know, it's an online class. I haven't taken one before. What does a week look like? So what is a typical week? And uh, starting off with, of course, each class is going to look a little bit different, naturally, depending on the professor. But as, as a whole, you can expect something like this. You can expect there to be a reading assignment that you'll complete each week. You can expect there to be reading uh, recorded lectures from the professors on a variety of topics each week. You can expect to engage with other students each week in the discussion forums through guided uh, discussions uh, led by the professors. You can also expect there to be assignments. Uh, each class is, again, a little different on that. So in, as in the, my introduction to law and legal methods, we have tiny assignments essentially due every weekend. In other ones, there's some uh, bigger ones that are maybe due three weeks out of the seven weeks, or maybe two bigger projects. So each one's a little bit different, but of course, you can't expect there to be assignments of some sort, so whether that be uh, essays or a research project or memos or um, questions, answers, that, that kind of thing. Uh, there'll be something on a regular basis to do on that front. So that's what a typical week would look like on an ongoing basis as a student in the program. I've already I talked about this at the beginning, uh, the, the graduation requirements for each of the various programs, so I'll go ahead and skip over this. And so that's that. Those are That's the gist uh, as, as far as getting you ready to get you going for the program, well, starting on Friday when you gain access, but officially starting on Monday of this next week. So uh, does anyone have any questions at, the, at this point? All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for attending today. Uh, I guess we can, we'll be able to end a little early then. So feel free, at, at, like I mentioned before, at any time you have a question about anything, graduate programs at albanylaw.edu, and we'll be able to help you with whatever it is you're having an issue with. So, so don't be shy. We love questions. You can never ask too many questions. Uh, we're, we're here to support you and, and, hope, and hope foster you through the program and, and hopefully let you have an, an amazing experience in the program start, starting now. So that, that's our goal. And if, ever, and if ever we're a little short of those expectations, let us know, and we'll, we'll try to find a way to make that better. So I hope you um, have a great rest of your day. Yeah, go ahead. Um, this is Sasha. I have a quick question about the curriculum. When are you going to update the, the web page? Uh, you currently only have classes for the next quarter, and I'm trying to plan the whole year, or I, I guess until the end of this year, based on my schedule. And I wanted to see what was coming up. So when will that be updated? That makes sense. Yeah, great question. So currently, you should be able to see the classes through the uh, summer semester, uh, which which takes you all the way through August. The next academic year, we hope to have posted within the next within the next month or so. But as a default, you can expect that uh, that all basically just the courses are rotate. And so as a default, you can have a pretty decent expectation that whatever was offered in fall one, fall two of 2019 will be the same for fall one, fall two of, of the next year and, and on, on a rotating basis. Uh, but we'll certainly let you know when, when the website's updated with next, the next full academic year of a curriculum. 
Okay, thank you. Yep. All right, thanks for that question. And again, you can email us at any time, graduate programs at albany.edu, and I look forward to working with you all. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Thanks Jason. Jason. Appreciate Bye -bye. it.